Right. What's, What's up, up, man? Hey, man, I like the intro. That's very nice. Did you very like that? Was that a, yeah. I, I built I built that just for you, man. Man, I appreciate it, dude. That's such an honor. 100%. Have a special intro just for me. 100%, man. Dude, let's um let's chat, man. First first tell folks who you are. I know on the uh, on the intro card I said uh Rock Davis, Mr. Church Marketer, but just like introduce yourself, tell folks who you are and then we'll uh man, let's man, let's talk marketing, branding, innovation, everything right now. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I'm Rock Davis. I own Mr. Church Marketer. Um, we are an online marketing and printing. Uh, we do some web design and consulting firm for churches. Uh, we work with small businesses as well um, under Rock Davis Creative. Um, but I mean, we, we do good, man. We're a, a small, nimble team. It's me and three other uh, team members, and we're just nimble. We do this. We've been doing it for a long time. And uh, We've been doing it specifically with churches for about a year and a half. So mm -hmm. excited to get the conversation started, man, and, and talk to you, man. See what's going on. It's a cool niche. Like I know that you and I, you and I first got connected not super like maybe six months ago. Yeah, like, give or take. Like yeah. But yeah. It, anyway, super cool, super cool conversation. Like we sat down and had a coffee and connected and um yeah, I like your um I, I mean the niche of church marketing was really it's really interesting to me because um I mean, not, I mean, this call isn't about that. This all call isn't about churches yeah. specifically, but like as that example, like those churches, man, like a lot of churches need tons of help, right? Like they're not, they're not versed in, they're not versed in marketing. They didn't like go to school for that. They're like, they're pastors, they're people, they're, they're they are the community. And so to, to get your help is pretty amazing or, or, or a company like yours or whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's really cool because for years, and I think it's still most churches, most pastor settings, it's still kind of a, when you mention church and marketing together, it's a real taboo kind of thing. You know, it's you, know, yeah. you trust God and you, you just kind of that build it, they will come kind of attitude. Yeah. So when you mention marketing, it's like, oh, what you know, that's right. not, we shouldn't do that. But we just take it from a, a business marketing perspective. We take, you know, tactics, strategies, things that, you know, we use for businesses and that businesses have used for years. And we just kind of make that applicable to a church setting where, you know, a church, I believe, should be ran as a business. I mean, it's the mission, the, the message of a church is the same as it should be. Um, but the methods should be ran like a business and it should be promoted like a business. And, uh, you know, we tell people all the time, every business has a message and they have something they're trying to tell people about. And yeah. if you're a pastor at a church, you have the most important message, we believe. And, you know, right. those pastors surely would believe that. And so you got to get it out there. And the way to get it out there is with proper marketing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. hundred percent. I agree. I mean, I, I, I get how people's probably opinions or views are like, Hey man, what are you talking about? So, I mean, I get, I get what you're saying on that. I probably previously, probably years ago, five years ago, I may have been one of those people like, what do you mean? Let me a marketer for a church or whatever. Yeah. But now like, I mean, in the eyes of, um, Hey man, a church is in, is a, is a, a structured entity in the eyes of the government or the IRS. They are a 501 organization and yeah. any entity has to exist and it has, you know, um, statements and has forms and has to exist and bring in revenue and has expenses. And, you know, it's, it's, it, if, if that church is like a physical, you know, yeah, the, chur the church is a very broad term, right? But if it's, <laughs> Yeah, I know. And, and here we go. Here we go down a rabbit hole of what, an a church. organized church. Yeah, there you go. An organized church with a building structure in that community that, yeah. So, um, I mean, that would probably be a whole cool like Facebook live conversation in itself to talk about all that stuff and the structure and church and how the church started and where we are now and different. Wow. This is really interesting, but like just in general, I guess, I guess, man, I, I most in general just want to talk like marketing innovation in general, man, because I know that's like, I know that's your expertise. And, yeah. um, one of the things we were talking about, well, side note, I mean, I just know in the last, um, couple of days, you know, I've been talking about this with multiple people and you just brought this up, man, the amount of, the amount of innovation that like people are doing right now, like in the last 72 hours. So we're in the mid of COVID-19 like shutdown in Alabama as we're recording this. I mean, we're live on Facebook, but the amount of innovation I've seen now is insane. Now, some people are like, I think some people, um, 
some people are freaking out, not doing anything. Some people are kind of like have their head in their sand and they're like, oh my gosh. But there's a group of people. It's mostly the people, honestly, that I, I kind of affiliate with or know. Yeah. They're like, man, they're, they're hustling and learning crazy stuff. You were just talking about getting a permanent studio set up. I'm using a piece of software I've never used before. I just used Calendly for the first time ever. I was like, okay, finally, maybe I need to like use this to schedule and book some meetings. Whereas before I never needed it. Now I'm like, whoa, I'm booking these calls. I need a little bit more organization. It, man, I, I, I am being pushed. And so yeah. I know that I know tons of other people are too. So, yeah, it's, I mean, I think when anytime there's kind of a disruption in kind of how we're doing our business, especially this unprecedented, like worldwide disruption of economy and how we're doing business, how we're running our personal business, how other people are running business. Because the, the thing is, most businesses to some extent depend on other businesses. So even if you sell donuts and you are selling to just a regular person, if that person that you're selling donuts who doesn't have a job, you're affected yep. by it. Or if you're more like, you know, kind of us, like business to business, B2B, like if those businesses aren't open or not allowed to be open, then how are they going to pay us for our product or service? So I think what we have to do is I was thinking about this last night. Um, it's, you know, there's kind of there's business leaders and then there's like exceptional business leaders and entrepreneurs. And that kind of whole thing is, you have to see what's coming before it comes. You know, there's proactive and reactive. And so mm -hmm. I think with, even with your marketing, your innovation, with the whole branding thing, we kind of have to keep an eye on what's happening in the, the world view, especially like if we would have all saw, you know, when China first got hit with this COVID-19 and how it was rolling and going to eventually come to us. You know, I think some of us saw it and kind of like, OK, well, yeah, it's probably going to come to us, but it won't be that big a deal. Right. But if we were like, preparing for it and and thinking okay what are they doing what are, what are they doing in that country what are they doing in these other countries that are being hit before us what's happening to their kind of society and their way of living and now how can we kind of be preparing so when it does get to us then we're ready to react to that and so i think that um a lot of us are kind of caught off guard i mean i know i was i, I thought it was to come but i wouldn't think that it was going to come like this and kind of shut down like you said i mean they just announced just a few minutes ago that the whole state of Alabama, if you're not an essential business, you have to you know, yeah. shut down and stay home. So, um, and that's in Alabama. I mean, other yep. states, I know in, like the East Coast and I think California, they've been under like that kind of mandatory shutdown for a week or more. So yep. we're kind of the, the late to the game in doing that. So it's just, we have to innovate. We have to think and we have to prepare and look at it. You know, the whole scenario of, glass half empty glass half full how do we do that and what can we do to, to innovate that way and right now you know everyone is at home everyone is you know most mm -hmm. states have to stay home you mm -hmm. know we were under my wife and i and our little boy we were kind of self-quarantining i know you and mandy yep. and your son were yep. kind of self-quarantining so like, you know we didn't have to but we were doing it anyway and a lot of people were doing that but um now we we have to so what happens with that is people are home they they're watching TV, they're on Facebook while they're watching TV, they're on Instagram, they're on TikTok. So what are we doing to innovate the way that our business can be and positioning ourselves to to reach our customers and to reach our potential customers in the future while this is all going on? We can't just fold up shop and just wait for it all in. We yeah. need to be innovating ways to reach out to those people. And a good way to do that is Facebook Live, Instagram Live, TikTok. And so I think that everybody's scrambling to figure out how to live stream and, and how to better relay their message and show people, you know, the, the three main pillars of marketing, know, like, and trust. We want people to know who we are. We want them to like us and we want them to trust us that we we know what we're talking about uh, with our product or service and how we can deliver it to them and, and give value. So do yeah. you, th do you think people that typically were doing the majority of that in person, that's going to, everything's going to change that now oh, we're, we're now going to build more relationships like this, like in not in person. And we're going to be able to gain trust via doing that. And it doesn't have to be in person necessarily like shaking a hand across the table. Oh yeah. 100%. I think, I yeah. think this has been the way the world's been moving for, I mean, at least three to five years. Yeah. So the world's been already moving this way and it's taken people that are, they're, they're held on to tradition. They're held on to the way it's always been done is I've got to have an office. 
I've got to have my sign out front. I've got mm -hmm. to have people to come to me in my business and meet me in my office. And if, you know, kind of an ego thing, if I don't have an office with a sign out front, then I'm not a legitimate business kind of as a yeah. business owner, you might think that. And then, you know, as a customer, you might, um, not trust someone that doesn't have an official office. Well, if they work remotely out of their home or a co-working space, maybe that's because right. they're not as legit as somebody else that has an actual office building. But right. the, the reality is, is that, you know, this is forcing everyone to realize that, look, yeah, business is not as usual, but it can still get done. It can still be effective, if not more effective uh, from a digital online platform. So, yeah. yeah. Someone, someone brought up a good point to me the other day and said, uh, man, if you were an employee at a company and you've been wanting to be a remote worker for your company, now is your time to shine and yeah. show and show your boss at the end of all this. Look, look at how I've done better by working remotely versus being in the office. Like, so take that to heart people. You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, this is your, this is your chance to show your employer. Right. Well, and the thing is, is like like businesses like ours, you know, we, we do a lot of printing. We have offer over a million products of different printing items and stuff. And so, um, you know, three of the people that work for me are designers and I have one of them. Uh, she lives in Sweden. She's from Florida, but she's uh, living in Sweden because that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to move to Sweden. Uh, she's got some opportunities there for she's working like for a missionary uh, organization. And mm -hmm. then uh, one of my best friends lived here, lived in Bala Battery moved to Pennsylvania and he does a bunch of designing for us. And uh, then another one of our designers lives in Georgia. So, you know, it's, we have all these, we've been working like this for a long time, you know, yep. and I meet with people here locally when I have to, but man, we've been doing this for a long time, but um, I think it's starting to legitimize it, you know, like, yep. hey, you know what I can maybe save a little bit of money with a, per, a, a business and a company that is a remote organization like that. Um, that, that can save me a little bit of money because the overhead's a little bit lower, but we can still meet like this and have, you know, same conversations, same meetings, same things. You know, Gary V said the other day, don't make, I think it was, don't make an hour meeting, a 15 minute meeting an hour long just because you have to. Yeah. So I think that's kind of, you know, the efficiency of this, this model of being able to work remotely, work from home, work from co-working spaces. It's just, this is just proving what I think guys like us have been saying forever. Like, why? Why do I need that? Why do I, you know, why do I need to to have an office building and spend the expense there? But when, when we can do everything like this, when we need to, you know, super, so. super interesting, right? The change. So like, yeah, I mean, there's been, yeah, it's not a new concept. It's been happening for, I don't know, 10 plus years. There's giant companies that have hundreds, even thousand employees that are complete remote companies that have uh, a lot of software companies and stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, employees all around the world, they connect like once a year for a in meeting convention to see in person, all the people that work with their company. It's nothing new, but like now I think that that was like a more of a kind of more of a, like a, it was a cooler kind of cutting edge thing. And maybe now it's going to be, I am very curious to see how much it turns closer to mainstream than just being the a cool thing or like the different thing, you know? Yeah, well, so, I mean, I, you think about it like, okay, let's say you look at companies. I mean, every company that offers customer service online or, you know, by phone, 90% uh, of that, if they have 24 hour customer service, you know, half of that time if, at least is from another country. And so when you have that um, other country, like dealing with your customer service, They've been doing it forever. So yep. businesses, even small to medium-sized businesses can look at it and say, hey, if they're doing that, we have the opportunity now through, you know, Upwork and Fiverr and stuff like that, that we can do the mm -hmm. same thing. We can hire people that work different hours. You know, it's, it is awesome to have, actually, I have another designer that works in Serbia or however you say it. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's a country, you know. Yeah, like, Serbia. Yeah. yeah, Serbia. Yeah, okay. Well, he works over there. So, he texts me at three. I sent him a job. He was working on a job for us at three o'clock in the morning. He says, Hey man, you know, I got a question about this or whatever. So he's at three o'clock. He's working while I'm dead asleep. So it's, yep. again, it's the whole, once you start seeing how all this can actually benefit you as a business and in turn benefit your clients, I think it's letting the clients know that it can benefit them too. So I think definitely it's going to, 
it's gonna be cool to see how it all how, how it shakes out after this. Do you um? So you mentioned you mentioned Fiverr Network. If people have never heard of that, check them out. So I've heard a couple of Upwork radio commercials in the past six months. I'm like, man, okay, all right, these guys these guys are big now. Um, so Upwork purchased a company. Do you remember what it was called before Upwork? I I don't remember because I didn't start using it until okay. Like, after they changed, I but. used it. I used it before then, and it transitioned to Upwork. Um, anyways, it doesn't matter because I it's yeah. not because it's not that anymore, right? Yeah. It's um it's now Upwork, but Upwork, yeah. So I heard radio commercials, and they're talking about remote workers. I'm like, man, that's amazing. So, um, yeah, I've used Upwork for a number of a number of jobs, man, over the probably last five or six years, and um, yeah. So I mean, that's you know, if you don't, if you don't, and I, I, I have like my personal views on that are very interesting. I, well, I say they're interesting that I I'm a global dude, man. I, I yeah. don't, I, I love local. Like I'll hire you as my next door neighbor if you're qualified. And man, if you are in Serbia, like I'll hire you tomorrow. Like let's like, let's connect if we get along and you're a fam. you have, you're a guy in Serbia and you have a family and children to feed. Like, man, I'm all about hiring you, you know, like yeah. let's, if, if, if you can, if you can do the job and we're cool and we connect and we can communicate and it can work. I don't care where you are personally, right? Yeah, well, so. with us, like we, I mean, we try to offer all of our clients, business and churches, we try to offer 24 hour turnaround time on their designs. Yeah. Because when people come to us and they're needing to order, to order business cards or flyers or whatever it is, you know, they need to order that. They need to have, hey, we need this printed, but we need it designed as well. Well, they need, we need to get it designed, get it to them to approve so then we can order it. It can get in the printing process, be printed, and then be shipped. So the quicker we can get that design turned around and approved, the better. So when we got people working, you know, different time zones, different time shifts and all this stuff, it's really convenient because, you know, it can be a design that comes in at seven o'clock at night. Well, everybody's done for the day, but, you know, my two people that I have overseas are not. They're just starting. So I signed to them. They're working on while we're sleeping. When we get up, you know, these people have a design. Like, how do these people get a design in eight hours? You know, well, because we're yep. we're thinking innovatively how mm -hmm. to keep that 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 system working that machine running when we're sleeping so yeah that's cool. actually that's a great point man that's actually an advantage that makes you that makes you a better option than some that only can work from eight to five central time or whatever right you can work 24 7 and it's not that you're working 24 7 it's that someone on your team yeah is and, right and the so, thing is, i mean you know you think about like hurricanes if a hurricane hits and puts mobile out you know of power for a week well, that if you own a business and it's only here, then you're shut down for a week. Well, we're never shut down because all I have to do is say, okay, hey man, you know, we're getting emails, we're getting stuff like this. I need y'all to work on it. I need y'all to keep it going. And so the business doesn't shut down because we're all in one location. When you spread out like that, you have a lot of opportunities to keep your business running efficiently because of how you're spread out around the world, essentially. So it's really cool. It's, um, I think that, you know, not only having your team abroad, but I think that the opportunity to innovate when it comes to you specifically as a business yeah. owner and as a business to position yourself in a online platform to create that atmosphere, just like this, like a live, a live show, you know, you're creating content that you can create, you know, an hour a week, an hour a day that yep. it's live. It's getting the most organic reach because it is live. Then you can record that, chop it up into micro you know, pieces of content that you can put on Instagram and put on again on Facebook, maybe a couple of weeks later to, you know, wrap back around to that conversation that you had originally and, um, you know, take quotes from that, use quotes from that um, in your, your marketing and your social media posts and stuff like that. And just as that, that kind of whole thing's growing, it's, it's just the innovative way to, to create that like, know and trust factor in your business and with other people that you're connected to, it's just, it's really, it's crazy. The, t the thing is, it looks crazy uh, right outside. It looks like the world's falling, uh, the sky's falling. But I mean, if you look at it from a, a glass half empty and you're thinking, okay, how can I look at, you know, something that's, this is not happening to me, but it's happening for me. Yeah. This, this whole thing is crazy right now. It's happening for my benefit. It's for my good. It's if I look at it that way and I'm approaching it that way, trying to figure out, okay, all this craziness has happened. You know, all this, you know, drastically, you know, like you said, business is almost to a screeching halt. Yep. What can I do now? What yeah. now? And you have to, as a business leader, innovate and, and pivot to figure out, do I need to offer another service? Maybe. 
Yeah, is um, you know, exactly. We offering one page websites. You know, we like I said, these churches, uh, you know, a lot of them didn't have live streaming set up. So we're offering a one page website that embeds your Facebook live there, love it. your online giving platform, your service, your live service times, love uh, it. even a, even a form where they can fill out and, you know, ask a question or something like that. One page website. We're getting it done in two days, getting you up and running. And it's three hundred and fifty bucks. So, oh, my gosh. You know, oh, that's so get- cool, man. Yeah. Man, see that like that pumps me up. So that wasn't that wasn't a that wasn't a product for you probably a week ago. I mean, you could do it, but you weren't offering that saying, hey, look, we're going to help you do this. Now the smallest church can yeah. and can have a website that people can go to to watch a streamed service or ha- whatever's embedded right there. Somebody can donate some money. And oh, my gosh, maybe they didn't have any of that set up, didn't know how to do it. And now you guys are doing it for 350 bucks. That's crazy. Yeah. And look, and- Two days, you know, like quick turnaround. We were, I mean, we build websites, but I mean, it takes, you know, two weeks to a month or more to actually yeah. get that built out. And, you know, $1,500 or more for a website and right. all this stuff that goes into it. But I mean, now you, you have to, in situations like this, you have yeah. to innovate. If you don't, you're going to get stuck. Your business is going to shut down. Your church is going to shut down. Yeah. If you don't look at it and say, okay, look, what can we do to do that? And so innovation is, you know, it's, it's got to happen. Speaking of innovation, look, man, we can do stuff like this. We can do Max Sells says, great point, guys. Bring in comments live on a yeah. flipping Facebook show. Like, how crazy is this? Thanks, Matt. Appreciate your comment. Yeah, Matt. Uh, Lawrence Roberts is saying, this is good stuff. I like this guy. Hey, he likes Thanks, you, man. Lawrence, Lawrence Roberts, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we like Lawrence, don't we? Yeah. Game changer. Oh, my gosh. Man, Lawrence yeah. is just lighting it up, dude. We appreciate yeah. that. And so I'm monitoring comments. I don't, um, I will say this. I'm not hundred percent sure if I'm bringing in all the comments from my personal page, BizCon. I'm still figuring that out. I feel like it doesn't pull in everything, but I'm, I'm watching what uh, this tool, which is uh, StreamYard is bringing in. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, things like that are amazing, right? So I, I took um, a clip of a show where I just did this yesterday with a phone call. I Chromecasted it to my TV and this is yesterday. It's this, so I Chromecast, I go, oh my gosh, like, dude, we're live on TV. Like, yeah. it's official. Like, you know, yeah, it's not a broadcast net. Man, I'm telling you, I call it the merge. I've been calling it the merge for about the last year. Um, whatever, I'm not coining this phrase or anything, but the merge, right, where, I'm, where I'm saying the internet and cable and everything is come, you know, it's been happening, obviously, with phone services and cable, right? Internet, TV, or internet and TV, like, Okay, who's who's providing my internet? Who's who's providing my TV? It, it it's all the same, right? It's all yeah. it's all it's all data. It's all yeah. data. And now the question is, who is making deals with the um what what companies are making those deals and who is able to stream that content, right? And so, I mean, Facebook's just playing playing the game. What I what I think is pretty amazing is that this is immersive TV. Yeah. Like what we are doing right now is potentially. You can't do this. I can't turn on the TV and interact with other people that are watching a TV show. No. So I'm going to, I'm going to pose you this question. I just thought of this yesterday and I just, I found this super interesting. I don't know what it means, but I, it doesn't bother me. I, I'm just, it's just, it's thinking. So the, I tested this software that I'm using right now. I tested it yesterday um, with my wife with a cell phone, sent her a link and she's able to get a link, click it and just have her camera live. I was like, holy smokes, my, my, co- and I'm switching to my other company, the mobile rundown. I'm like, we, like, we've already been a media company, but I'm like, I can do what other news companies do if I want to have someone live on site. What I've been concerned with in the past is giving, is giving someone, um, an employee like login information. I can make them, a, I can make them like a page editor or something like that. But let's say I want to do Instagram or something like that. Now I'm just, I'm thinking now I can stream this, have someone with a side-by-side, send them a link. They don't have any login information. They click a link and I'm in control of what they do. If I don't like what, if I don't like what they're showing or viewing, I can turn it off. Now you can have a commentator. This is me at the studio or someone. Yeah. And then a, and then a live viewing at some location. I mean, like this just hit me yesterday. I was like, oh my gosh, dude, this is crazy what this could do. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, sorry, I got a text. No, 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 that's all right, man. So, like, uh, I know so it's like 
is I think that you know Gary Vee, I and mean, we all probably are familiar with him in some regard, but he's been talking about the the whole like we can create yourself as a you need to create yourself as a a, a, a media company as a broadcasting network. Yeah. And so when you look at that and you think about it, like TV cable TV has already been going down because of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus now and all these different streaming services that you can get everything that you want and uh, you know have more like of what what you want for cheaper you know and you don't have to be tied to a tv in your house you can watch it on your phone you can watch it driving down the road you can have your kids watching it in the back you know with a tablet or whatever so there's the opportunity to you know i can think one of the biggest things that's been lacking is community you know so when we're watching tv we're you know that's what kind of our parents maybe our grandparents oh that, you, you're there's, you're not talking to anybody you have no social interaction because you're just watching tv you're not talking to people around you because you're watching tv but with with the internet with facebook live with you know instagram live and different options like that you're like you're saying you're able to watch something you're all together we're all being able to talk back and forth we're all able to ask questions we're all able to Call in. I, yesterday, you know, I was watching the the mobile rundown show, and you pulled me in. You know, you and Mandy, we just talked for a few minutes there. So it's like the it's opportunity crazy. to have that missing element that was TV was the community part. Now it's it's there. It's available. So it's really cool. It's really cool how that all works. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a- absolutely crazy. So um, another another kind of question I just want to ask you. Okay, so well, actually, before before I get to that. Um, we're talking about chopping up, chopping up the information, right? Using the information and chopping it up uh, to repurpose, reuse in different, like on different content platforms, which I think is definitely a super important strategy, probably for any business. Because if you're going to spend the money or take time to create a piece of content and it's good, then you should totally be splitting that up and repurposing it and reusing it on other platforms. A hundred percent agree. So the question is, is like, have you found an easy, I don't know if there's an easy way. Is there an easier way to do some of that? Because I know at the end of the day, it's, it's work. Like it's, um, at, you know, is there any other way than just doing it or have you found any useful tools that could assist with that or anything? Uh, you no, know, well, there's, there are different tools that you can use uh, to mm-hmm. make it easier. Um, you know, if you get versed mm-hmm. in a program called DaVinci Resolve, it mm-hmm. is very similar to Adobe Premiere that you have to pay a monthly fee to use yep. um, now, or you could, but you can use this. It's absolutely free. You can pay a little bit more money and get it kind of like it's a little bit expansive, you know, a little bit added features. High so end video. Cool to have that, but it's, it's really easy to use. There's tons of videos on YouTube. And what you can do is take that whole recorded Facebook Live interview yep. and be able to chop it up to add graphics, you know, more, a little bit elaborate stuff. So yep. DaVinci Resolve is really a, a tool that I highly recommend in this everything shifting to video. Um, uh-huh. Definitely that's something that you could use. It's very powerful and easy to use. And then, you know, um, Canva. Canva is a, yep. free, a free program that you can create little social media posts. Um, and in short, like quick, I mean, you can do like five minutes, maybe you can create one, throw one together. Uh, and it's really neat. You can create, if you, I think they have a paid version where you can, save your brand color so if your 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 business has certain colors in the branding you can save those there so you don't have to go look or figure it out so uh canva and davinci resolve is really cool ways to figure that out but you know honestly you can hire a designer and or an editor like we talked about on one of those upwork or fiverr or one of those yep. kind of platforms and man you can get somebody to do it for little to nothing especially if you get them like on a monthly you know kind of yep. residual kind of deal and i mean they can do it for you there's guys even locally um that can do that stuff for you quick easy but you know definitely one of those platforms you know somebody just out of college that needs a little extra money or in college we, yep. we had a guy interning with us that uh, was doing a lot of our social media stuff for us and he was in college and we paid him like five bucks a post you know i mean so to like design, uh, yeah, like per yeah. design for some stuff. Yeah, so just design a post for it. I mean, and you could even, like, let's say that you have somebody that if you don't have, like us, like a creative team, you could just hire somebody to create a bunch of backgrounds for you, like professionally yeah. designed backgrounds. You know, 150 bucks probably gets you 30 posts. Just get the backgrounds, and then you could just upload those in the Canva and just type in the text that you want it with other font, 
and there you go. You're done. You don't have to worry about the background part. So great idea, man. Great yeah. idea. Wait, yeah. At the end of the day, like, there's no. I think. I think uh, the answer is like you got to do the work. The, to, yeah. to, to, to repurpose the content like you have to do the work but the, you know the question is like how do you go how do you go about it yeah do you hire someone that can uh that can do all of it do you do you have the ideas and then say okay i'm gonna do these three things and then expand because because you can really get go down a rabbit hole of everything that you can do i think with all the, with all the content um i, I do that when, when i say you i'm talking to me like yeah I, I can go down a rabbit hole right i'm like man we're gonna do this and i i want to do all of that i want to get to the point where i am posting uh, multiple times on certain platforms. And I'm like, okay, how do I get there? And I have a guy that helps me. So I definitely hire internationally. Um, yeah, I have a guy that's actually been with me uh, for close to a year now. He works like 20 hours a week for me and just does all kinds of cool stuff. And um, um, and this is one of the things that we're actually working on right now is like how to break up, how to break up some content and, you know, developing that idea and getting there. It takes, it takes some time, but, um, but you know, it's it, it's worth doing, I think, and so you know, I, but now's the time for businesses, right? Like, so yeah. now's the time. Like, if you're if you were ever gonna uh, try to focus on, like, if you want one of those projects, you're not sure what to do right now in this time, uh, make that one of your projects. Okay, how can I take content and re and repurpose it? So yeah, and something that you can do, like, is I think working from home. You know, I've been doing it for uh, you know full time for a while now, so I kind of got gotten it figured out a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. but I think something that's a big thing as this shift happens with us working a lot more from home or even your team members working a lot for from home. So let's say you as a business owner, you're not going to work from home. You're still going to be working in the office, but maybe you're going to consider hiring some people to work from home. Um, something that is a big deal for me that's helped me a lot is having a routine where at this yeah. time I get up, this time I get a shower, this time I eat breakfast, this time you know, I do this and, it's, and really schedule me really rigid with that schedule. Amen. So you can do that. You can have like on Mondays, we do a Facebook live every week, you know, at Mr. Church Marketer now. So we're yeah. consistent with that. It's either going to be an interview or it's going to be myself getting on there and talking about 30 minutes to an hour about whatever topic we're talking about. So that's consistent. We know we're going to do that. It's on the calendar. It's not going to change. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, we get asked, you know, like, hey, to do interviews on other people's shows. So we're doing that, you know, kind of as they come in. But then like you set a time like, OK, on Tuesday from the, block those hours out. And if you want to do it yourself, this is what I'm going to sit down and I'm going to look at the last week's video. I'm going to watch it through. I'm going to make time stamps on there. Of, OK, at five minutes and 13 seconds, you know, I said this or my guest said this. So I want to make sure that we, we cut that out. And or so this was said that I want to make sure we make a social media post for that. Yeah make notes take take this time to, to make notes and to clip it all out if you want to be hands-on like you're saying you know and just just block it out man and just make it a a routine you get in the habit of okay i've got to go and do this you know because we working from home can be freeing and awesome but yep. you can get you can chase the bunnies down the rabbit holes you know a hundred percent hundred percent agree so like do you so on that point man of uh of doing that is that something that you would do all yourself or would you entrust someone else to uh view a video and find highlights personally i would yeah. um i would probably want to do that myself and that's yeah. what i have been doing um gotcha just because at, and i think here, here's a good kind of way to think about it i think that if, even if you have someone on your team that you think might be capable or probably is capable or you know they're more capable that, at that than you, I yeah. still think you should take a, a few weeks to a few months to kind of do it yourself. And the reason being is because you want to create the vibe of your brand. Or if you have like a you know a marketing person in your business, maybe you and them sit down and have a conversation and go together so that you're, you're creating the way. You're creating, again yeah. – uh, another expansion of your brand, how you want to people to portray you, how you want people to feel when they watch a video. So, you know, if you have a video and you're talking about COVID-19 and you, that's all you're talking about is, you know, what's like to say if you're doing it from a medical side, you know, well, this is what's happening and all these people are getting sick and this many people are dying and all these people are dying in this country and this and that and the other. And, you know, it's affecting this age group and all this stuff. So it's kind of like a, a doom and gloom kind of episode. You know, it's kind of like a depressing episode. Well, do you want to take a clip of that and put that out there for your brand? Is that what your brand wants to represent? Or do you want to put in there the part of the show that's talking about? But the good news is, you know, yeah, all these people are recovering. And, you know, and so, yeah, I think 
as you you work through it with your marketing executive, you have one, you work at that together for a little while to kind of create that vibe, create that. Uh, yep. The, even the look of the thumbnails, even the look of the the kind of the overlays you put on it, the text, the font you use, and then you kind of create. Okay, this is how I want it to look, and then you can hand it off to somebody. And say, okay, look, watch this these videos, look at these social media posts, and we're going to let you take over it now and just keep that format going. I think that'll make it a lot easier on that person to to do what you want them to do and just kind of you create you set exactly them up. exactly yeah so i'm like so my i'm like in the middle of that right now and i've kind of tasked i've kind of tasked a guy with doing some of it but i'm kind of hands-on with him i'm not you know doing all of it i'm like hey i'm i'm at the very beginning of it right now but yeah. i'm just kind of like hey man give this a go and we're kind of I'm, I'm kind of looking at some stuff that he's created or chosen out of that and kind of reviewing that with him right now so yeah that's kind of that's why i asked you that so yeah. um Cool, man. So uh, you mentioned Canva earlier. So that would be if, if someone was like, Brooks, top five productivity tools that you use, that would be on my list, like without a doubt. And so anyone that watches this far, um, I thought it'd just kind of be a cool question, man. Just make it the last question, then I'll, I'll let you roll. But would be like, just you right now in your business, in your life, what are some, and it could be anything, but what are like some top productivity tools or hacks or whatever, some things that you're using. It could be software, it could be whatever. And I'll, I'll show you some of mine too, but um, yeah. we go back and forth or you could just go, let's go back and forth. Okay. You, you name one, then I'll name one. And then you okay. name one, let's do it like that. All right. The number one productivity tool that we use in my business that is by far the greatest tool that I've ever used as far as productivity goes is ClickUp. ClickUp Click up. is, if you've ever heard of Asana or Trello, mm -hmm. Um, it's very similar to those, but it's kind of it takes both of those worlds and merges them together. So with ClickUp, the way that we use it in our business is um, we use it as an actual kind of uh, productivity management system. So we have people that buy directly from our website or some mm -hmm. of them, they, they order something a little bit more unique. So we have to create an invoice through them. So what we do is we send them an invoice. If we send them an invoice, or if they buy something directly off the website, as soon as that transaction is complete, money in the bank that's ordered, we're done, then it automatically creates a, through another productivity app that we'll talk about it next, uh, it creates this um, this job in, in this productivity app that we had it set up. And so it goes open, and then as it goes to the open scale, uh, as soon as it gets it, it notifies me that, hey, a new jobs came in. And then I just assign that to whatever designer that it's not overloaded at the time or, you know, I've talked about the time zone kind of works out best for them. So I assign them the job. We, all the details are there. We attach all the logos. We attach all the information to that job. And then that designer that's working on it can move that job that's in the open <clears throat> state. When they start working on it, they just click a button and they change it to in progress. So then it moves that job to a different category that's in progress. And then once they get it, designed or whatever and they need me to review it they just click a button that says rock review i review it if there's any changes that i think need to be made i uh, you know tell them if not it goes to the customer so then i change that to out for review for customer mm -hmm. then if the customer approves it or they need something changed if they need something changed we can move that to revisions a section that says revisions and every time it moves it notifies me and the designer that's assigned to that task where it's going so if they are you still are you still in ClickUp or are you describing are you describing the next piece of software now? No, this is all ClickUp. This is all ClickUp. Okay, so, so you told me about ClickUp. I, I just want you to know, man, I logged in. I created an account. hadn't done one thing. Re <laughs> reason, I, I am getting the emails from ClickUp. They're like, hey, we saw you logged in, but you're not using it. What's up? So yeah. here's the reason why I haven't because my number one – tool is Trello. <laughs> the, okay. the, the one and and the one that I use, I've used it so long, man. I have so many boards, so many projects. Like that would be that would be my number one tool. Um I kind of just threw them up on the screen just so people can see them or whatever. I'm probably gonna take it back off right now. But so Trello, I just want people to be able to see like what the actual websites are or whatever. Yeah. Um dude, so like that's that's mine. Uh, probably my number one if I had if I had to choose, if I had to like order tools or just things that made me like um uh pr you know productive or whatever. So I'm tempted to get in and use ClickUp. It's just so hard when you're like I, there's so many good tools out there, right? Like Asana is good. I know people, I've, I've actually jumped on there. Um, and I, I don't want to throw out too many cause I don't want, I don't want the next one to be like yours. I, I was going to be like, this is good. That's good. This is good. That's good. 
Um, all right, so let's let's so let's just move to so Trello, similar thing. You can organize projects, have to dos. You can do it just for yourself. My like whole life to do list is on there. Um, every business, every project I work on has some, a Trello board and Trello stuff in there. You can have people that you share boards and similar stuff, right? Like move stuff yeah. through some processes and chains. Um, either one, if you're not using any productivity tool at all, go out there and find one and just start like start using one. You know what yeah, I mean? Is what I'd say. So well, yeah, ex exactly. So I'm assuming ClickUp probably, I'm sure they have a paid version yeah, they do. yeah trello does so trello just got bought out by some company i don't know what the company is but when i logged in like three days ago they were like hey you've got to adjust your username like trello sold to some company and i can't remember the name of the company but trello same thing i've never had the need to pay for whatever the paid version is man i'm like yeah. i'm like who, who who pays for this thing like well what are they doing you know what yeah. kind of projects are these people doing but so all right Go go to your go to your next tool. What would be your ne what would be your next tool? That would be okay. just whatever. The next tool would probably be uh, Zapier. And okay. so for Zapier, I don't know however you yep. say. Um, I don't know. Well, Zapier, but, Zapier. Uh, somebody can correct tool, us. It is something that's kind of like a an in between tool. So basically, if we want our website um, when a, a sales complete to tell this other app like ClickUp, hey, this sale just got completed. Do this. Zapier or Zapier, however you say it, is exactly um, that tool. Again, it's free. I think you can do it to like seven or ten different, they call it Zaps. Yeah, so, Zaps. So, um, you know, we have it. One of the Zaps is doing is every time we get a new client, yep. add it through our invoicing system or our website, that new client's information gets added <coughs> to Google Doc. So we have a list of all of our clients, all their phone numbers, addresses, all that good email addresses, all that good stuff. So that Zap. It's free and it does it for so it's kind of like um, a small it's assistant basically in your life to kind of connect two things that you need them to do and you don't have to think about it. It just as it does this, it does that automatically for it. So that's a really good tool and it's free. Again, so. I'll, yeah, so I I know about it. I have I I know I have an account with them. I think I've set something up before. I've never really found. I'm probably you know what man. I probably just haven't done something repetitive enough where I'm like, Dad, gum it. I need to set up a zap. Or you just hadn't thought about it. Yeah, you just had. Or or I'm doing it, and when I and when I do find that appropriate zap, I'm gonna laugh out loud for about 45 minutes because I'm gonna be like, Huh, yeah, I could have saved like 27 hours of my life if I had just set up a zap like two years exactly. ago. Right. It's, so it's really, I think I'll okay. just say this about my list. Activity, but not like before you, you're done with yours, but like um, if you write out like kind of how you want your system to work. So if you yep. think about it just from your client experience, you know, whatever that is, they buy something, then I want mm -hmm. to send them an invoice. And if you didn't automatically do that, you write it out exactly how you want your process to work. And then you look at these tools, you know, that we're talking about, then you can kind of figure out where that tool can kind of do one of those tasks or, make that task easier or faster without you having to think about it. So I think writing your, your whole process down really will help you to kind of, you know, step one, step yeah. two, step three. Then you can kind of figure out where you can connect those tools to make them work for you. So no, yeah, I mean, that's a great point. That's a good tip. Cause what I have done is just looked at zaps and been like, okay, I, I've tried to work that way, like work backwards just to see what all they offer and be like, Hmm, does any of that fit what I do? But maybe I should do what you're saying is kind of, uh, yeah, draw, draw out the process and, yeah, then, and, and then go look for the zap. Okay. I, I mean, I went to Zap and said, okay, I've got these two apps I use. So, mm -hmm. and, you know, Zapier, Zapier will tell you um, all the different functions they can do. So, yeah. that, that I got you. I got you. Wait, Maybe, you oh, yeah, I can do that, you know. Dude, so this is the perfect time to be doing that kind of stuff, right? So, yeah. normally I would not have time to stop, slow down, and look at that. I wrote, I just wrote it on uh, on my whiteboard. So, it's, it's my, that's like, one, one of my tasks. So my, all right, my next tool, <laughs> this is like show and tell, dude. This is kind of crazy. Here's my man. It's not even a piece of software. Straight up old school notebook paper, man. Um, that is probably, that's probably my number two. Is it, wait, am I on two? I think I'm on two. Yeah, we're I'm on, on two. two. I'm on two. Yeah, yeah. man. So I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I mean, I, I love the technology. Don't get me wrong. I dig it, man. I mean, all, all the all the tools. I use Trello and I write everything on that, Notepad and Google Docs. Um, ooh, that's probably, would probably probably make my top five. But like, um, <laughs> man, straight up pen, pen and paper, man. Notebook is probably, that's my, that's my, that's my tried and true, man. I always have a, uh, always have that going on. So anyway, so that's my number two. Back to you. You're on number three. All right, number three. Uh, it would be 
def definitely probably G Suite, uh, which is just Gmail's paid version of their email. Yeah. Uh, reason being because it comes with Google Drive, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of like a Dropbox. If you know familiar with that, just kind of all your files can be sent sit there and sent um, real easily. And then it's really easy to send up set up an email with your um, your like a vanity email. So let's say like yep. MrChurchMarketer.com <laughs> is our website. Well, if I want it to be rock at MrChurchMarketer.com, you can do that different ways. You can do it through your domain. You can pay your web like host or your whoever built your website to do it for you, but it can get expensive. Mm -hmm. So $12 a month, I believe is what it is for one account. And it's easy. I mean, you just type it in there. It sets it up automatically. As long as you own the domain name, it sets it up yeah. for you automatically. And it's really simple. Um, I probably don't use that to its full like capacity, uh -huh. uh, but it's, it's really cool for emails, you know, and just use your emails and set up your vanity emails like with that with a cinch. So we all have um, our own at and you know, or whatever, because, you know, other businesses, we have that as well. So it's really G Suite. I definitely recommend it for your email provider all right. on top of, you know, instead of Gmail. So. so that's your number. That's your number three. I feel yeah. like we're playing the game. I'm like, I feel like we're if we have five apiece. I'm like, all right, man. What's what's Come left? On, what's what am next? I going to use? All right, my number three. I'm going Canva, dude. You going Canva? Definitely going Canva. That would be on my top five tools, productivity. Canva. Um, Canva's the new. So. You know, so I mean, I'm pretty sure tons of folks probably know what Canva is already. If they don't, um, so I, I I can show you a design actually. So I just created for uh, for this for this intro. I created that in Canva. So let me hop back on and share the screen real quick. Um, so back to the screen. Look, okay. So here's images right now. I guess these are my designs. So what I think is um, what I think is interesting about Canva and so create a design, I can say custom dimensions um, and whatever. We don't need to like do this live necessarily. That's not the, that's not the point. A Facebook post. Okay. Click it. Um, but yeah, that's not the point. So, but the, what Canva does, what I think is cool. The reason why I think Canva is neat is because it, it, it lowers the barrier to entry to like what used to be, um, harder to get into for design, like to create something that was of good quality, right? Yeah. Like even if I Photoshop back in the day, that was it. it you had to use Photoshop. And so you had to learn it. So you had to go through the the curve of learning it. And and there's a curve, right? Like there is a, there's a barrier to entry and that barrier to entry is it's like, it takes time, hours. You have to learn the software. You have to have the software. First of all, it's not a, it's not a free online app. So you have to have it. And then, um, and then you have to, and then you have to learn it. And so, you know, that's what Canva's done is just lowered the barrier to entry insane. And so um, the company, I, I heard a podcast from the girl that started it, man. She, uh, it's a girl, I think she's from Australia, um, that runs the company. They started out putting yearbooks online uh, or something. It was something related to yearbooks. Like they were making it easy to edit yearbooks online, like a yearbook creator or something for schools. Okay. And this Canva kind of like morphed out of that. It was straight up like a pivot, man, like yeah, out of the business idea. And I think they still, if I'm, if I'm correct, I think maybe they still have that product or that service, that business, but Canva became its own, its own entity out of that, out of that business. And um, yeah. And so obviously you can do tons with the free version. There's also, there's also a paid version if you want to use it. I think I think we actually have a paid version for through the mobile rundown or whatever. Uh, there's a, I mean, not to like plug links or affiliate links or referral links. I think I have one, and you get some kind of discount or something. Whatever you could ask me, and I could I could get it to you. Um, or if you hop on on my website, uh, brooksconkle.com, you'll find resources there. I'm sure I have a link for like for Canva there. Um, but so Canva. It, that's what I, I, I'm just actually kind of excited about it. You know, as a, as a non-designer person, like is design your background? Like, are you, yeah, a, you yeah, that's design is my background, yeah. Design and web design. Do, let, let me ask this. I haven't asked this to anyone and this is kind of, it's not tangent, it's not side stream, but like, is, does it bother you that Canva now exists? Like for designers, do designers feel like, Hey, that's my, that's my territory and you're making it easier or not necessarily? Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me uh, or offend me in any way. The, Something because I think you mentioned this, I think yesterday or another one of your shows that I watched. Um, 
was that even though you can use the tools, you still have to have a creative mind to make it look good. 100%. So I think the problem is um, that people get into Canva and they think because I can use this tool that I know what I'm doing. And yeah. especially like with the print side of our business, people send designs all the time that are like, yeah, you're like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, right. that's when you got to do I tell them this is an ugly design or do I know it's printed? So most of the time we just say print it, you know. That's yeah, just, like, I think. mean, are you approving this proof? Yeah, you yeah. check the box. Yeah. OK, yeah. like, all right. Really? Yeah, you didn't ask me my opinion. OK, people just they don't understand. Um, you know, it's kind of like if you went to a doctor and you said, hey, doctor, you know, um, I need you to do open heart surgery on me. Well, then you're watching the, the doctor do the open, and you're saying, hey, man, that's not right, you know. Yeah, that's, you're not doing it correctly. Yeah. So that's kind of how we look at it. Like we're the doctor, we're professional designers and you're sending us this and it's like, okay, you know, we're not going to correct, you know, because most people, they want what they want. So, you know, that, that I have, I see that problem, but you know, personally, I mean, Hey, you can design it. One thing that I think that's, they think they can be a good designer because they can use the tool. So I think that's a problem. But other than that, I mean, Hey, whatever, rock it out. Well, I guess so. On the on the on the note where I think it really makes sense is that um, there's a lot more stuff today that needs to be designed, and there's probably not enough yeah. designers for it if there were. So it's like now it allows the barrier to entry for people to design the simple stuff like social media posts. And like I mean, I'm yeah, I use Canvas uh, Canva every day, but man, I'm still I'm still hiring graphic artists for when I need stuff designed, like logo work or creating a pamphlet or something. Like I'm always, I mean, I'm steadily using designers as needed. And so yeah, that's not. I mean that that yeah. the craft the craft ain't going away. You know, oh, that, yeah, no. that, that and, wasn't again, the point. Is I think I mean, hey man, if you can do it yourself and save some money, you know, a lot of businesses and mm -hmm. you know, churches, any organization, they need to save money. So if you can set like you know. We try to keep all of our designs. If you're getting something printed with, we charge 35 bucks to design it. Yeah. So, it's for, you know, yeah. 35 bucks is nothing, but to some people, it's, you know, they only can afford this little bit amount. So, if you can design right. it yourself, you know, the only other problem I think is when you get something printed, you know, you can design it in Canva. And if you uh -huh. don't get the right specifications, yep, yep. when you send it to us to, or anybody to print it, it could be off. So, we have to let you know that, hey, that's not the right proportions or that's not, you know, high enough. Um, Right. DPI with these dots per inch. It's not yep. it's gonna look grainy when it prints out. And so um, you know, I think yep. that's it's important to, to keep in mind. But hey man, I love mm -hmm. it. Any tool that moves people forward and gets them doing something, just do something. And yeah, yeah exactly. 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 All right, man. So I stole that one. That was number well, that was number three. Yeah, I three, stole, yeah. I stole three. I, I wish I had like a little like I need a little whiteboard. I think there's a whiteboard thing on here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring it in, but uh on, whatever. Brooks, it's five things. You got two more to go. We can do this. Tick, 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 not I was, gonna, I was gonna do a little scoreboard, you know. Like, oh, scoreboard. Okay, yeah, you you want that for sure. So okay, right. so this yeah. one I think I'll take the case for sure. The Ooh. fourth one that I'd have to recommend is it, it's called TryShift.com, and the app itself is called Shift. All right, TryShift.com. Never heard and of it. What this does is, especially for entrepreneurs or business owners that have multiple email addresses, mm -hmm. it keeps all of that stuff together. I think we talked about it. You one told time. me about it. You did tell yeah. me about so it. Yeah. So basically. Um, I mean, I can show you. Can I share my screen? Uh, yeah, maybe. Hold on, maybe I can figure that out. Uh, yeah, I can share it. Yeah, let me show you. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's see if I can. Does it like ask you to share? Do I have to like give you permission or something? Yeah, let me look. I'm trying to. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how that works. I'm about to figure that out. Share screen. It's easy with two monitors. Da -da 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 -da. All right, let's see. Maybe it'll pop up on mine and says like yeah, there you go. shares. All right, I can share that. Can you see that? Uh, oh, yeah, I see it. Cool. I can add okay. the stream. Are you ready? So Do you like what's there? All right, cool. Yeah. All right. All so right. This, is, um, this is like one email account. So it's all my emails here. This is another email account, another email account, another email account, another e like. So I have several emails. So it's all right here. Yeah. And then I have uh, Facebook um, for my business, Facebook Messenger for that business. Um, this is another app that we'll talk about, an invoicing app, and then PayPal's right here, uh, and then ClickUp's right here too. So that's all there. So basically, um, what I can do is I can have uh, all of my um, all of my productivity apps, I guess, all of my emails, um, PayPal stuff that I use all the time is mm -hmm. all that one app. So I don't have to have a bunch of windows open in my browser. I can just have that app running in the background and when I need to do it, you know, I work off two monitors. So I usually have the shift app in one monitor and then 
whatever I'm working on, looking at the internet or creating something or whatever on the, the other monitor. So gotcha. email comes in, it notifies me. I can click right there to see where it's at. I don't have to wait to sign in or to log in. It's already there. And it keeps everything all together and organized in one app. So shift, that's my number four for sure. Uh, it, it, it does cost. I think it's, uh, I want to say it's like $30 a year. It's really inexpensive, <clears throat> but it's, it's really a nice tool um, to keep everything kind of, in one place so you don't have to search through your tabs on your you know chrome or whatever it's just all right there so gotcha no that's cool man yeah you did you did tell me about that um so you kind of have one of yours for your fourth but it doesn't matter i mean i guess technically we could have the same one i guess technically but um i so i'm just gonna say like all just all things google so i've always had nothing this matters but i've never had an iphone or any apple product i've always had android phones um that is great yeah, man. I, it, it, people find it weird. They're like, what? You've never, I'm like, no, man, I never had an iPod. I was always that dude with the, uh, like, I don't know, creative MP3 player. I, I don't know. I always just, I always gravitated towards kind of what was a little bit different or whatever. But I mean, I mean, Android technically, I guess the biggest on the market. I mean, I, I love, I love iPhones, like nothing against them, but just everything I have has always been Google. I've always used every Google product. So, you know, obviously Gmail, so calendar, um, I, I definitely use drive. I use docs like crazy. I mean, I don't, I rarely open up a, you know, uh, um, Excel spreadsheet or anything like that. I mean, I'm opening up a, a sheet in, in Google drive. Um, so I'm using all those products and obviously they all sync to whatever device, right? If I, if my phone blows up, I get a new phone, log in, and then everything's there. You know, very similar to how, you know, Apple, I guess would, would work with an Apple ID, with, but, um, disclaimer, I've used nothing but Android as well. Yeah. Until last year, I got an yeah. iPhone uh, XS Max. Mm -hmm. The reason was for the calendar, the I mean the camera, and I don't care yeah. what. I mean, I was the big Android fanboy. Like, I, yeah, yeah. Apple sucks. Mm -hmm. Apple's garbage. You know, just see. I'm not that guy. Yeah, I was because there's just the restrictions. Um, I got you. But once I've got the the iPhone for the camera and the yeah. uh, the video. I'm totally Apple. When it comes to phone, I'm still a PC guy, but yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Android, I'm with you on that. I can see that stuff for sure. Yeah, I just, I mean, I have respect, like mad respect for Apple. I'm just kind of like, I'm 100% happy with what I'm using. So uh, like, you know, there's no reason to switch. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like ClickUp, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty efficient with what I got, I think. And so I'm like, well, I can spend the extra time and learn the new thing and, may, and maybe it will be better, right? It might be, but um, you know. So yeah, man, just all the, all the, all the Google tools inside of, and I don't have G Suite. I don't, I don't uh, pay for that. I just use the free version. I do, we do on the other hand, um, we do pay for extra storage through Drive. I think we have an annual thing and we have like 50 gigs or something like that or something just, just to have a lot of cloud storage. And yeah, I still use like local hard drives and stuff, but just yeah. for, for like stuff that we need to share or, yeah. or sync online or whatever. So yeah, I would check um, out G Suite though, because it might be the same price to get kind of those benefits that come with it. Get maybe paying for the, the extra drive space. So that might be maybe. Fun. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, so, okay. So all things. Google is for you. Yeah. Uh, number five would have to be B. Live. B. Live. Yeah. This is not really productivity related necessarily, uh -huh. um, which I mean, I could name an actual productivity app, but I think that one matter. of the most efficient apps that I'm using right now for my business is B. Live. Um, it is, it does cost, but uh, it's very similar to what Brooks is using is this, the StreamYard. Yep. But it's a live streaming platform that allows you to plug in a webcam, use the webcam on your, your computer, your laptop. Um, and it's really easy. You can put overlays on it. You can put graphics there. You can put names up. You can play music, play videos, all within this one app that's not downloaded. It's all based on the internet browser. Mm -hmm. and, um, it plays it. You can pull people in really simple. You just send them a link and they can join your conversation and, interview so it's very similar to Streamyard. i think um, they copied each other man everything you just described like so i actually looked at b b dot live just right before sign up with stream and hey man I, I i'm not like it's not like i've been using i've been using Streamyard for three days now um, yeah. i'm not a uh i'm not like an expert at it i just i looked at b dot live and uh, man they are super super similar platforms actually yeah um something like, that very i thought similar. that was a benefit to Streamyard is that you can stream to two places with b dot live you can only do one. So if you're wanting to do Facebook Live, it can only go there. Um, 
which is StreamYard, you can go to two different places at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, gotcha. I, I think, I'll gotcha. just say that. I, I guess a live streaming um, app is very important, especially now. Mm-hmm. And I, I just to say this, um, I don't want people to think about this as now, like we're living in Corona, we're living in this, you know, self quarantine or mandatory quarantine now. So let's get these, this, you know, live streaming stuff going. And then when everything goes out to normal, we just forget it. I, like Brooks was talking about earlier, this is not going to end yeah. the, when this is over, uh, as far as you need to be online and you need to be having some kind of content uh, with video related. So I would definitely get that, learn it now and figure it all out and then continue to do it. So yeah, for sure. Some be that live stream or some kind of um, live streaming software that's easy, that's really intuitive and that you can bring people on real simple for them to get on. So yeah. Yeah. And if you want something is, I, and obviously uh, I feel like the, 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 the new buzzword is like, is, uh, is zoom. Um, if you want just something simple to do a, a one-on-one call or group meeting, I mean, obviously, you know, zoom and you can, uh, you can stream on to Facebook or YouTube via zoom as well. I think you have to have the paid version. I just yeah, had the paid, I, so. I, I had the paid version. I think in the past you didn't have to, um, which is why when I Googled like how to stream live on fa- on uh, Facebook from Zoom, I was like really frustrated and and trying to figure that out because I was like, why is this option not there in the software? But it says just click this option. And um, it's man, it's it's really funny. I actually just made a YouTube video last night, like how to how to um, how to stream live on Facebook from Zoom because like I couldn't figure it out and I was kind of frustrated. I was like, well, whatever, let me just show people how to do it and and post it. So um, because. Uh, it's kind of buried deep, man, in their in their advanced settings to like turn it on. Once you even pay for the, once you even have the paid version, it's kind of crazy. I don't know. I don't know why they. I don't know why they've done that. But um, so well, you can actually do like this for two people. So you can use BeLive or uh, Streamyard and do the same thing. You can just like you know we were before the show talking. You can do the same thing instead of going to Zoom, and we can sit here and talk. Exactly. And, not, and just so you have one app to, li- you know, to, to have, you don't have to record it or, or broadcast anything like that. So that's something. Right. That- right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Like I could, I could hop in here and then just send you a link and let's just chat or whatever. Yeah. Or, so, or, or, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I was gonna say, or record it, even even not streaming online, but record it and still make it kind of cool like this with a show and like do that and then save it and then possibly reuse that content for another video right. snippet or whatever. So it's, yeah. it's just kind of a cool, uh, it's just, yeah, it's just done. It's just done. Well, it's kind of made it, it's, it makes it easy for you to produce something that's kind of cool and uh, yeah. appetizing, I guess. So. But if you have like a million people, I think zoom can do yeah. like up to, I don't know, a ton of people. I it can, it, people on there, it so. can do a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it can, it that, can definitely do a bunch. I think that's the main benefit of zoom is the large amount of people that you can do. So, so, all right, I'll, I'll do my number five. My number five is gonna be like a four. It's gonna be like a four-way tie. All right, I'm just gonna like rapid fire them. All right, so it's a uh, my last my last one's gonna be it's a four-way deal. Uh, it's a mix between Slack, my whiteboard, Dropbox, and WhatsApp. Wow. See, I don't use Slack or WhatsApp. I so the reason why they're not further up on my list is because I use both of them for only one. So I use Slack for one business and I communicate and we store files and stuff for one business. I use WhatsApp. All I do is communicate with a, the guy that works for me internationally uh, and we communicate there. We'll send voice memos. I just moved them over to Trello. So now we have a Trello board together with like projects that we're working on. But um, yeah, I, I use it only for that, but it's a pretty dang cool tool and it works perfect. You can send, you know, straight up crystal clear voice memos to each other instantly, which is kind of what I like about it. Uh, my whiteboard obviously is, goes along with my, with my paper concept, I just like being able to write stuff down. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then, you know, and then the Dropbox file sharing, I still use Dropbox, even though I have drive, uh, kind of drives my wife crazy, but, um, because she's like, where, where's the file? You know, it, it depends on what we're So, anyways, I put my Dropbox on her computer too. So we, you know, um, Anyways, I, I use, yeah, I use both Drive and Dropbox. So those are probably like all kind of, it'd be really hard for me just to choose one of those, you know? So Yeah. Well, yeah, it's cool, man. And just so you know, ClickUp does voice messages and uh, all you. that stuff. So that's, I see what you're doing here. And you I can see comment and say, hey, fix this or do this. I see what you did there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not getting paid by ClickUp. They should pay no, me. No, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know, I know. 
It's um, cool. so that's really interesting. Yeah. I don't, I, uh, but I'm like, man, is it worth it when you have all that data like in Trello and that's where I go? Like, uh, can I, I wonder if I can import all my stuff from Trello. Yeah, I think so. Man. I might, I might try it. Try might try it, it. Just give it a go. Even okay. just try to just create a new, something new and just play with it and see what you think. Yeah. It's cool. exactly. I take, just watch some videos on ClickUp. Just watch some videos. And that's see what I'll do. That's what it's, I'll do. I'll neat. watch some videos. We'll check it out. Any, uh, any, any, any final thoughts and stuff, man? We're like a touch over an hour, so we need to kind of. Yeah. Final thoughts is innovate. Don't, don't sleep. Don't relax. Oh. Don't, you know, uh, hit the brakes. Keep hitting the gas. If you feel like you can't get sales right now, um, you're probably wrong because people will still buy. But the main thing is go ahead and create content to be building up that trust and to be building up your workflow for it and your systems and figuring out the tools that you want to use to get all it going so that when things do get back to more normal, that you still have these tools and systems in place to kind of make you go faster and more efficient when things, you know, pick up for business. So yeah. Innovate. Well said, dude. Well said, man. Can't say that any better. I'm going to play this outro out and then uh, we're going to tell the people to holler. So I'll see you, man.